And there's Avi Tall Jacobson with the ball there. Now to tall, now to um, oh. Olivia Weinstein right there. But this ball is turned over and it's Kiku Shaw on the inbound. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. And that's Maytal Hiller with the ball driving down the court. Um, guarded by Millie Heft out to the corner for Hila Lazary to Kiku Shaw and now to now to Maytal Hiller into the corner for Avi Tall Jacobson again. And now in the middle for on the paint for Talia Tazabi. Back outside to Kiku Shaw. Kiku Shaw crosses over. Guarded. Guarded by Millie Helft. Now into the now into the paint. But the shot is fouled. But that was that was Avital Jacobson. As we can see so far, the SAR Sting has been really pushing a 1-3-1 zone. They've put one defender on top, three defenders through the middle, and one defender on the bottom. I had a second to catch up with Ryan Coleman, the coach of the Shalhavet Firehawks before the game, and he told me that they were looking to push the ball to the wing where Hila Lasher will be running up and down looking to get quick and easy three-pointers. It's so hard to defend against the zone because they don't like to move the ball up and down the court, but Shalhavet's going to try and pass the ball and outplay the SAR Sting. And that's Sophia Reif with the ball. Uh, now to... Lucy Heck. Lucy Heck for the three, and she can't connect off the rim there. The rebound is by Avi Tall Jacobson. Now to Kiku Shaw driving down the court. Passes it to Talia Zabi in the paint. Kicks out to Millie Tall Hiller. Hiller to Avi Tall Jacobson. Jacobson back to Hiller to Kiku Shaw. Does not shoot. Now that's down low for Avi Tall Jacobson and gets the layup. Spins it up and in. What a play by senior Avi Tall Jacobson. And now Lucy Heck with the ball, guarded by Maytal Hiller. That's inside to Olivia Weinstein. Back out to Lucy Hecht in the corner. She shoots the three and can't connect. That's an air ball. Nice boxing out by number 11, Kiku Shaw. Already you can tell SAR Sting's got three players who are taller than the entire Shaw that Firehawks team, but they're gonna box out on the boards to try and keep the SAR Sting off of rebounding too much. Yeah, and that's Maytal Hiller back to Kiku Shaw with the ball now, guarded by Millie Hecht. Out to the corner for Avital Jacobson, but it's an air ball for the three. Now Sophia Rafe with the ball, driving down the court, guarded by Hiller. Screen, it goes back out, over to the corner, Lucy Hecht. Lucy Hecht into the middle, and the layup is no good off the, off the rim there for Levy Weinstein. And Nine. Maytel Hiller driving down the court, driving, and goes into the paint, kicks, goes into Kiko Shaw. Kiko Shaw the layup, and she sinks it. Nice passing already by the Shelton Firehawks. How do you outdo a zone? You move the ball, it's simple. And there's Sophia Rafe with the ball again, driving out into the paint, goes to the layup, and gets it off the glass. Great shot. 
now back to Hiller, driving down. Gives it to Tasabi in the paint, goes to Tasabi for the layup, and she gets it and one! There we go, ladies and gentlemen. The Shahaba Firehawks moving the ball up and down the court, trying to outrun the bigger but slightly slower players on the SAR Sting. What an incredible play by the Shell Hovet Firehawks. Already we can see the Shell Hovet Firehawks have been pushing a press up and down the court. They don't want to let the Shell, they don't want to let the SAR Sting get the ball past half court because they don't want to let them set up their half court offense in the case where they are bigger than most of the players. I spoke to Ryan Coleman and he also told me that if we can keep them from crossing half court, that we can keep them from winning this game. And the free throw is off the rim there, can't connect. But the rebound is by Kiku Shaw, gets the ball, but stolen there. But it's, it's a foul. Foul call on Kiku Shaw. Gotta be honest, I would have called it the other way. I would have called it traveling. I thought she took a couple steps there. But the refs thought otherwise. Yes, and here's Lucy Hecht on the inbound. And she's going to give it over to Laura Brownwine. Brownwine guarded by Hiller. Back to Lucy Hecht on, this, on the corner. Into the paint, that's Weinstein. And now Lucy Hecht back up top. Gives it over to Sophia Rafe again. Drives in for the layup, and she gets it. Nice play, penetrating the, ch the paint already. And there's Maytal Hiller with the ball again. And she's going to give it over to Kiku Shaw. Now, now to Hila Lazary, back to Hila Lazary outside. And fakes the shot, doesn't go for it. Kiku Shaw back to Maytal Hiller. Maytal Hiller drives in for the shot jumper, and she can't get it off the glass there. And now it's back to Sophia Rake. Sophia Rake's going to be driving down, guarded by Kiku Shaw. Goes into the corner, almost gets the ball stolen, but gives it back over to Laura Brindwine. Brindwine down low, get it stolen though. That's going to be SAR Sting ball. And it is, appears as if number two on the SAR Sting, Sophia Rake seems to be limping off the court. She will take a seat on the bench. Number zero for the SAR Sting, Leia Stern will check in and take her place. Not something you want to see an injury early on in these games. Hopefully they can recover. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. And there's Luziak taking out the ball in the inbound. Uh, tough to get someone open there, but gives it to number zero, Leia Stern. Leia Stern gets into the paint, but gets blocked by, by Hila Lazary. Are you kidding me? I'd call that a triple rejection. You had Talia Tibby, you had Hila Lazary, you had Talia Tizabi all on top of that ball. Yes, there's Luziak on the inbound again. Gives it in the paint to Rebecca Grzyminski, but back outside to Olivia Weinstein. Olivia Weinstein gives it back to Lucy Hecht. Lucy Hecht guarded by Tali Tibby. Gives it back to Laura Weinwine. And down low to number zero, Leia Stern. But it's gonna be out of bounds going the way of Shahada Firehawks. <laughs> Take your choice, shot clock violation or out of bounds ball. The Shahada Firehawks played excellent defense on that possession. One of the SAR Sting players got open early on, which you don't want to see, but they managed to recover and they managed to cover the ball and hold them and not let them score any points. Yeah, so now that's Talia Tibby with the ball now, number 12, and she's going to be guarded by Leia Stern. Back to Kiku Shaw on the side. There's in, into the paint with Talia, Tizip, Talia Zabi. Back to, and now Talia Tibby on the side, and she gives it to Kiku Shaw up top, guarded by Leia Stern. And she's going to give it over to Talia Tibby. Talia Tibby drives in, but gives it to Talia Tizabi, and goes for the shot and is fouled there. That's not something you want to see if you're the SAR coach. You had Talia Tizabi all the way out on the sideline. I couldn't tell from my position, but I might say she was, she was actually behind the basket. She went up with the ball, not really knowing where the rim was, and got fouled. You know, you don't want to see bailing them out on the, other side of the, uh, on the other side of the ball. At the same time, you have an excellent free throw shooter in Talia Tazavi. So hopefully she can knock down two and take a four point lead for the Charlotte Firehawks, and she takes the first. Sorry, we forgot to introduce ourselves before the game had started. I'm Ari Schlach, reporting for the Boiling Point. I'm Avi Litvak. And we just want to thank Nicholas Fields, the Director of Broadcasting, and Gilad Spitzer, the Director of Multimedia at the Boiling Point. Now, back to the game, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, and that's going to be Lucy Hecht on the inbound. Press coverage by the Firehawks. Back to, back to, back to Hecht. Hecht driving down the court, followed by, followed by Tibby. Screen there, but keeps the ball. Goes, drives in, and goes to the layup, and gets it, does not get it, but it's a foul. Offensive foul. No foul, actually a traveling call on the play. Looked and like she was stuck there, but shuffled her feet instead. Here we go. The inbound is gonna be to Tibby. Tibby's gonna take it down the court. Gives it to Kiku Shaw. Shaw back to Tibby. And Tibby's gonna be guarded by Sophia Rake. So Tibby drives in, almost gets the ball stolen. She's on the floor there, and it's gonna be a jump ball. And that's gonna be in the hands of the Shalvet Firehawks. Inbound by Hila Lazary. 
And she's going to give it to Tali Tazabi in the corner. Back to Maytal Hiller. And he allows her for the three, but it's off the rim. Rebound by, almost by Tali Tazabi, but it's going to be out of bounds. And sting ball. You know, Talia Tibby, an excellent dribbler, but loves to dribble the ball through a crowded paint. She drives it in there, tries to Euro step a lot of times and get a layup off, but a lot of times she gets stuck in there. She's also an excellent three point shooter, so she should learn to use that to her advantage. And there's Heck taking the ball down the court, guarded by Kiki Shaw. She's going to give it over to Lucy Heck. Lucy Heck is guarded by Talia Tibby and double guarded now, but gives it over to Sevier Reich. Sevier Reich is going to be guarded by Maytal Hiller, gives it to the corner to Olivia Weinstein. And Weinstein back to back to Lucy Hecht, and now over to Laura Brinewine. Brinewine's going to be guarded by Kiki Shaw. Brinewine drives in, and the ball's on the floor, and it's going to be a jump ball. You know, interesting to see for the Shell of Fire Rocks. They actually had one second left on the shot clock. Had that not been a jump ball, probably would have been a violation. But regardless, they're going to try and inbound the ball and throw it up right away. And there's Lucy Eck on the inbound, almost gets it stolen, but it's over to the corner. And Laura Vine won. It's going to be a shot clock violation. Oh, 100%. You see early on, this SA, this shall have it defense is really stifling. The SAR sting. Hopefully, they can get some points going on the other end with Maytal Hiller. Maytal Hiller is actually in the game. My bad. But here and we go. there's Kiku Shaw over to Tibby. Now, now to Jacobson in the corner. Back to Tibby. Tibby for three. And it's off the rim there. And it's going to be, it's going to be Lucy Eck taking the ball down the court. And Lucy Eck going to be guarded by Kiku Shaw. Tacked over to Rafe. Rafe into the corner. Rafe goes, drives in. But it's a foul. Is it on the ground or was it in the air? It's going to be an on the ground foul on, I believe, number 30, Hila Lazari, but I'm not sure. It'll be SAR Sting Ball under the basket with 20 seconds left on the shot clock and 2.51 left to play in the first quarter. Yeah, and that's going to be uh, Lucy Hecht on the inbound guard by Kiku Shaw. And it's not touched by anyone open there, but gives it out to Sophia Rafe. Sophia Rafe pump fakes, drives in, and goes up the fake, passes it out, and the layup can't connect there for Grzbinski. And Maytal Hiller drives down the court, gives it to Talia Tibby outside, and it's going to go back out to Kiku Shaw. Kiku Shaw for three, and she drains it. Cold blooded shooter Kiku Shaw came to play tonight. Foul by the SAR Sting. Timeout. Timeout. Maybe a foul, maybe a timeout, not sure. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Already an exciting game from the tip off. We have the Shalhavet Firehawks on one end playing incredible defense against an SAR Sting that's historically been able to push the ball into the paint and get layups done. And they've only gotten two tonight by their point guard. So if I'm Coach Ryan right now, I'm happy with the defense that we've been playing. I gotta ask you, Avi, how do you think the SAR Sting get back into this game? You know, it's not a big lead. But it's not, it's not a big deficit, but at the same time, you don't want to be down going into the second quarter. Yeah, I agree. I mean, they're only down five, but it definitely feels like more than that. But I think that they got to find a way to get past this. They'll have it defense. They've been really dominant, definitely pressing in the backfield. So we'll see if they can find a way to do this with Sophia Rafe and Lucy Hecht. For sure. What would be something interesting to see is that the SAR Sting have pressed in the past. They're not, they don't love to press the ball on the defensive end, but will they go into that tonight? I'm not sure. You got number 11, Kiku Shaw, on the Shelva Firehawks, who's lightning quick, and you got Maytal Hill or her, you know, running mate in the backcourt who's just quick as well. So we'll see if they, decide, if they decide to go into that. But right now, we're back to the game. And there's Rafe taking the ball down the court, guarded by Talia Tibby, gives it over to Lucy Heck, back to, back to Rafe. Rafe drives in and gets the ball stolen by Talia Tibby, and she's going to give it to uh, Caroline Edry there. And Tibby takes the ball down the court, draws it over, gives it to Kiku Shaw. Kiku Shaw does not shoot the three, gives it back to Tibby, and Tibby is guarded by Sophia Ray. Uh, gives it to Caroline Edry in the corner, back to Tibby. Uh, Tibby crosses over, goes in, kicks out to the corner, and Tobi, Tali Tzabi in the paint, and Tibby goes back to Kiku Shaw, Kiku Shaw to Maytel Hood in the corner. Back to Tibby, Tibby for three, and she can't connect, that's off the rim there. But it's gonna be Lucy Hep taking the ball down the court for the sting. Guarded by Hiller, fakes it inside, gives it to Rafe back, and guarded by Kiku Shaw. T gives it back to back to Hecht. Hecht fakes the three, goes inside to Grzbinski, back to Hecht outside, and guarded by Shaw still. And Rafe now with the ball in the corner, shoots the three, but off the glass. Tough shot there from downtown. Right off of the knee of number three, Laura Brandwin. 
Here we go. It's going to be Shalva Ball on the inbound, bringing the ball down the court to try and set up their half-court offense. Yeah, and that's Tibby taking the ball down. And she's going to be guarded by Brownwine to, to, keep, to Shaw. Now to, to Zabi in the paint. Back to Tibby outside. Does not shoot the open three. Back to, back to, and now Tiku Shaw for the three, and she knocks it down. Second one of the night for Tiku Shaw. And it's going to be back in the hands of Sophia Rake, guarded by uh, Shaw. Screen by Brindwine. Can't get anything off that. Back to Lucy Hecht. And now Lucy Hecht in the end of the corner, choose the three, and she can't get it there. Off the rim, almost there. But back in Lucy Hecht's hand again with her own rebound, but she's going to shoot the three again, and it's off the rim, just short there. Rebound by Kiki Shaw. Kiki Shaw is taking the ball down the court, two on one. Goes in, Pat Gak, and Maytel Hill gets the layup. Now it's going to be back with Sophia Ray, down 12 there. Crosses over, gets past Kiki Shaw, goes into the layup, and not in, almost there, but rebound by Edry. Going, it's going to be in the hands of uh, the SIR Sting here. Rough break for Sophia Rice. You know, she's really getting the ball into the paint there, going up for layups, and it looks like she's getting battered around in there, and the refs aren't giving her any calls. She seems to be pretty angry with that. Honestly, I'm not, no, I'm not a referee, so I can't make the call for her, but and, I'd probably give her a call or two. And there's Hecht on the inbound out to Rafe. Rafe drives in for the jump, for the floater, and gets it in. And it's going to be Hiller now with the ball. Gives it to Tibby. Tibby open through, but doesn't take it. Now in the corner, but can't sink that one for, for Vassar Rathman. Excellent quarter for the Shelvin Firehawks, doing what they wanted to do. You know, really playing fast pace. Looks like they went out of their press break. Well, they went out of their press defense and went right into half-court defense instead. You know, I spoke to Ryan before the game. Another thing that he mentioned to me was he wanted Talia Tibby, the freshman on their team, to have fun. It seems like she's having fun, but at the same time, she's a bit hesitant to shoot the ball. Already missed two three-pointers early on, but she found herself open two more times to decide not to, to take the shot. I heard Ryan Coleman mentioning, shoot the ball, just yelling at her, because he wants her to shoot. You know, he knows she can shoot. He allows her, he knows she can shoot. Kiku Shaw, he knows she can shoot. And he wants his players to do what they do best and not be hesitant. <clears throat> But only six points for the SAR Sting, and all of them coming from number two, Sophia Reich, the senior. You know, they're gonna need to work their way back into this game, and they're gonna need to play some defense. Too much rotating on the defensive end. They're not covering their men, and I think that their zone isn't working thus far. Their coach might decide to go into a man-to-man -man defense the way Shalhavet has been doing it so far, but there's really no telling. And on the defensive end for the Shalhavet Firehawks, we see that Ryan Coleman has his players playing a man defense, and boy, are they playing it. You know, they're giving, all, they're giving their all. They're really giving all their energy and everything that they've got on the defensive end. They're running for loose balls. They're shutting down shot clocks. They're making sure that the SAR Sting has no way to score their points. You know, obviously, you want your players to have fun, but if Shalhavet the Firehawks keep up the way that they've been playing so far, there's no way that they can lose this game. Let's see if the SAR, the SAR Sting have a response as we're getting ready to go with eight minutes fresh on the clock. Shalhavet up by 10 points in the second quarter. Only moments away. Refs are waiting to inbound the ball, and Celine Buster Ottman will look to pass it in to the freshman number 12, Talia Tazavi. And there's, there's Tibby with the ball there, uh, guarded by Brandwine. Gives it back to Buster Ottmond, and into the paint for Hiller, back out to Tibby, guarded by Rafe, and gives it back to Buster Ottmond, and it's gonna be guarded by Brandwine, and into the paint for Hiller, kicks out to Tibby, crosses over, but almost gets it stolen there, keeps the ball, and gives it to the corner to Zabi. Tazabi drives in, and it's gonna be out of bounds. Five seconds on the shot clock. They need a quick shot right away when they inbound the ball. Hopefully they can get that and get two more or three more points. And there's Hiller to, to Tibby in the corner, and Tibby drives in, gets the shot jumper, the floater, and she gets it. And it's gonna be Rafe taking the ball again down the court. Uh, and guarded by Jacobson, drives in, goes back out though. And she's gonna still be guarded by Jacobson. Fakes in, goes to the corner for Lucy Eckman. out of bounds there, it's gonna be Firehawks ball. Up and 12 points in the second quarter, you gotta be happy with yourselves right now if you're the Charlotte Firehawks. Yeah, and there's Tibby with the ball now, still guarded by Brownwine, and gives it to Master Adman. And now Hiller in the paint, 
but it almost gets blocked there. Into, gives it Jacobson. Jacobson for the layup and off the glass. Can't get it. And it's going to be Sting Ball. Eliana Kufferman looking to check in for the first time in this game along with Kiku Shaw. It appears as if Maytal Hiller and Celine Bustrapman will head to the bench. You know, Firehawks have their primary ball handler on the bench, but I don't think that should be a problem with them as well as they've been passing the ball so far. Yeah, and that's going to be raked with the ball, guarded by Shaw now. Uh, can't really find anyone, but there it gives it to Lucy Hecht outside, guarded by Jacobson. Goes in, shoots the three, and it's an air ball. Rebound by Kiku Shaw. Kiku Shaw is taking the ball down the court. Uh, goes in for the layup, and it's off the glass, but rebound by Jacobson. Jacob puts it back in. Another timeout by the SAR Sting. Never mind. A little bit of a commotion going on the court, but number 33, Lucy Hecht, will inbound the ball as SAR looks to put some more points up on their side of the scoreboard. And there's Ray taking the ball. Uh, still guarded by Shaw there. Still can't find anyone there, but gives it to Hecht again. Hecht still guarded by Jacobson. Uh, good defense by the Firehawks, but gives it inside for the layup, but it's a foul. That was uh, Brandwine. You know, you talk about bailouts, and it looks like Laura Brandwin was bailed out on that play. She stumbled on her way to the basket, was almost on her way, falling over to the ground, threw the ball up, and got a foul call. Not something you want to be doing if you're the Shalva Firehawks in this game. And the first three throw is off the rim for Brian Brown. And Hila Lajri will check in for Talia Tibby, the freshman, who's been playing excellent in this tournament thus far. And she's already knocked down a nice little runner in the paint tonight. Yeah, and the second free throw there is good for the sting, and now it's gonna be Shaw taking the ball down the court, guarded by Brownwine, and she's gonna give it to Kufferman. Kufferman out to the corner to Lazary. Lazary gets it, is turning over to Brownwine. Brownwine is gonna give it over to Hecht in the corner. Hecht for the three, and off the rim, just short there. Rebound by Kiku Shaw again. Shaw's gonna take it down the court, gives it in the paint to Jacobson, but kickball violation. Yeah, I mean, Hecht on the SAR Sting is an excellent three-point shooter. You know, it appears as if she's cold tonight. Hopefully she'll heat up for the SAR Sting soon and get them right back into this game. But, that, ha but has not been able to do that tonight. And it's going to be out of bounds, and she'll have it Firehawks ball. going to be the inbound with Shaw. Shaw gives it to Dezabi, guarded by Ray. Gives it to, to Hiller, back to Dezabi in the paint. Oh, gets it... Not stolen, back to Gouverman to Shaw for the three, and off the rim. Rebound by number 20, Al Berkowitz. And Sophia Ray can take the ball down the court. Crosses over, gets it in the, goes into the paint for the layup, and off the rim, but the rebound is for the sting. And a, a foul on number 13, Talia Tazavi. She seemed pretty frustrated with that, thought she had the block on Olivia for the SAR sting, but the refs thought otherwise. She's gonna head to the line, look for two points, and hopefully also get her first two points of the night. And the first free throw for Weinstein is a swish, and it's gonna be a 12-point game. You know, something you notice for these New York teams is they're all really good at shooting free throws. They must practice that all day because, you know, regardless of their three-point shooting ability, they can all knock down free throws in an orderly fashion. Yeah, and the second one's good again there, and it's gonna be Shaw taking the ball down the court, gives it to Hiller outside, guarded by Rake. Hiller gives it over back to Kiku Shaw. And Kiku Shaw's gonna give it in the paint to Tazabi. Tazabi gives it back to Hiller, and Hiller's gonna be double guarded there for a second, but it's gonna be out of bounds. And Shaw, Firehawks ball. Yeah, Metal tried to go behind the back there, but it ended up hitting off another SAR Sting player and falling right out of bounds. Luckily, it's and their ball. The inbound is almost stolen, but recovered by Hiller. Hiller drives in and kicks out to the corner, and the three for Lazary is good! Hiller <laughs> Lazary already getting started tonight. You don't want her heating up, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, and that's going to be uh, Brian Ryan with the ball. Gives it over to, to Rafe. Rafe kicks out back to Lucy Heck. Lucy Heck pump fakes. Goes to the three again, and she knocks it down. I told you, ladies and gentlemen, she's a three-point shooter, and she knows it. Yeah, and that's going to be uh, Hiller with the ball. Goes into the court for the jumper, and she sinks it. Back. Uh, the inbound is going to be for Lucy Heck. Gives it over to Sevilla Rafe again. Guarded by Kiku Shaw. She's going to take it down the court. Taking it slow this time for the staying there. And gives it over to uh, Wine to. Brandwine, 
to Lucy Hecht for the three again. And she gets another one, two in a row for Lucy Hecht. These aren't ordinary three-pointers. She's a couple feet behind the line, but she's knocking them down anyways. Yeah, and that's going to be Kiku Shaw again for the floater. And it's off the rim and can't get it there. But the rebound is going to be for Jacobson. I'm sorry for Hila Lazary, but it's going to be out of bounds. Sting ball. Number 10, Samantha Horowitz getting ready to check into this game. You know, really tall, really strong. And in the game she's played so far in this tournament, she's really been dominating the paint against other teams. You got Eliana Kufferman on the other side. Hopefully she can play some good defense against Samantha Horowitz. Yes, and there's uh, Sophia Ray going to be guarded by Hiller this time. Taking it slow again, but over to Brandwine and in the corner there, but back inside, and the layup is good for Olivia Weinstein. Little dream hook there. Yeah, and that's Kiku Shaw going to be driving down into the paint again, and there's a foul there. On the, she's going to be on the floor for a second, but looks like she's okay. Appears to be a blocking foul on the SAR sting. You know, if you're shuffling your feet when a player runs into you, they're going to call a blocking foul. Personally, I thought she was standing still, but the refs like to disagree with me, so I'm wrong once again. And there's, there's going to be the inbound to Hiller in the corner, gives it over to Lazary. Lazary for three, and it's off the rim just short there, but rebound by Tibby. Tibby goes to the corner, gives it to Hiller. Hiller fakes the three, goes in for the paint, and cannot get that shot there, but the rebound is by Sophia Rafe for the sting. And Rafe will take the ball down the court, guard by Hiller now. Goes, goes in quickly, but goes, goes in the paint now, and the ball is gonna be with Olivia Weinstein. Olivia for the, and Rafe for the three there, I'm sorry. And it's going to be rebound by Albatall Jacobson. Jacobson gives it to Shaw. Shaw takes the ball down the court into the paint guard. Lucy Hack, Lucy, and for the three, I mean for the layup there, can't get it. And the ball is back in the hands of Talia Tibby. Tibby gives it to Shaw. Shaw goes with the layup and can't get it, but it's going to be a foul. Get ahead to the line for two. Kiku Shaw, we warned you from the start. She's lightning quick. She's been running the ball up and down the court. Getting layups on the other end. Hasn't been able to convert early on. But regardless, she's getting foul calls, and if, if you're the SAR Sting, you don't want to be having your players in foul trouble before the halftime break. So she's going to shoot the first free throw when she's not going to knock, knock it down. Coach Ryan will huddle his players as he tells them and prepares them for the last three minutes and 20, 12 seconds of the half. Yes, and Kiku Shaw is going to shoot the second free throw here. They are up eight right now, and it is... Good for Kiku Shaw. And the inbound is going to be at Lucy Hecht. The Firehawks are pressing right now. And Hecht finds someone open. That's Sophia Ray, uh, guarded by Lazary. Double guarded now with Abigail Jacobson, but it's going to be a foul on the Firehawks. We want to apologize to anybody from the SAR Sting watching this. Number two is Sophia Reich. We've been pronouncing her name wrong, um, but we got it right now. She's an excellent player. Got an excellent spirit. Here we go. And there's Brandwine with the ball now. Gives it over inside to Weinstein, but the out of bounds. Can't get on that pass there. And the inbound is going to be Shaw. Shaw gives it to Hiller. Hiller's going to take it down the court now. Uh, guarded by Brandwine now. And she's going to give it over to Shaw. Shaw guarded by Heck. Now guarded by Brandwine again. And Lazary for the jumper. And she gets it. Uh, inbound is going to be for Lucy Hecht. Uh, gives it over to number 10, Samantha Horowitz. Horowitz gives it back to Hex. Hex is going to take it down. No, gives it, gives it to Horowitz again. Now Raish gives the ball, and it's stolen, but it's out of bounds there. It's going to be SAR Sting ball. Good you know, play. it could be 20 feet difference. It doesn't make a difference for Kiku Shaw. She's going to run the court, give you everything she's got every time, and make sure the opponents can't convert on the other end. Yeah, and the inbound is going to be over to number 10, Olivia, uh, number 10, Samantha Horowitz there, but can't get anything on that one. Looks like Ryan Coleman has went back to his press defense on the other end, looking to stop Shalhavet, I mean stop SAR from getting the ball down court. And there's Hiller with the ball as a point guard, but gives it over to Shaw, back to Hiller, and in the paint, but it's almost stolen on the floor there, hard to see what's going on, but... It's going to be a jump ball, and it's going to be the SAR Sting. Yeah, you know, Ryan Coleman yelling, it's not a hot potato. What he means by that in English is that we can hold on to the ball for a couple seconds before we decide what to do with it. You know, you got to have your players' attention before you pass them the ball. And, you know, you got to really know what you're doing before you start there, throwing that thing around. There's Hecht on the inbound to Raish now. Raish is going to give it out back to Hecht. Hecht drives in for the layup, and she gets it. What a Euro step by Hecht. One dribble from the three-point line, 
Euro steps around and takes a blocking foul on guard Kiku Shaw from the Shelvin Firehawks. Talia Tazavi to check in for Kiku. Ryan for sure does not want does wants to make sure that Kiku does not rack up too many fouls before the half. And Hecht with the, the free throw and she gets it. And the inbound is going to be for Hila Lazari. Gives it over to, to Maytal Hiller, uh, guarded by Brandwine. Gives it back to Tibby, guarded by Raish. And into the corner for Hila Lazari. Lazari back to Tibby. Tibby goes back to, to Hiller, to Tibby again. Into the corner for Lazari. Lazari to Tibby. Tibby doesn't shoot the three. Tibby goes in to Hiller. Hiller crosses over, goes in into the paint for Tazabi, and the ball is stolen there for Brandwine. Brandwine drives in for the layup, and it's off the glass, can't get it that one. But the rebound is gonna be for Brandwine there on her own shot, and she's gonna give it to Raish there. Raish guarded by Hiller, and Raish is gonna give it back to Lucy Hecht. Lucy Hecht is gonna shoot the three, and it's off the rim. And the ball with Jacobson. Jacobson goes down, and it's gonna be Sting Ball. She was looking for the foul there, but it looks like they had a clean rejection. She fell to the ground to try and recover the ball, but ended up sliding out of bounds. Yeah, and it's gonna be Raish again with the ball back to uh, Hecht, and Hecht guard by Jacobson. Jake crosses over his Hecht, and taking it slow a little bit this time, but uh, gives it back to Raish. Raish guarded by uh, Lazary. Back in the paint, but gets loses control of the ball in the corner now for Weinstein, Weinstein, and it's gonna be a foul there on uh, uh, Avital Jacobson. Ryan Coleman of the Shaw Firehawks not happy with his team right now. You know, they are keeping their lead, but at the same time, their defense has not been great. He put the press break on, and you know, the SAR Sting have been doing exactly that. They've been breaking the press every single time, getting, getting the ball down the court, and Hopefully, they can find a way to stop them and keep their lead if they're going to want to win this game. Yeah, and um, Samantha Horace doesn't get the first free throw, and we'll see if she can sink the second one here. And it's up, and no good again. But it's going to be it's going to be Sting Ball there. Some people are confused in the stands, but it looks it's definitely going to be Sting Ball. The inbound is going to be um, with Lucy Hecht. Uh, Heck gives it over in the corner to uh, Weinstein. Weinstein gives it back to Race. Race guarded by Edry. Race drives in, goes up for the layup, and she doesn't get it, but it's a foul on Jacobson, looks like. When it comes to ball handling, the SAR Sting already have four turnovers, but on the other end of the ball, the, SA, the Shalhava Firehawks have five. You know, you want to play a clean offense when it comes to getting the ball in the hoop. And that means not giving the ball to the other team for absolutely no reason. Passing, turnovers, when it comes to fouling, that's the kind of stuff that you don't want to be doing if you're either team trying to win this game. And Raish can't get either free throw there, but the rebound is by Horowitz for the sting. Gets the ball stolen though for Hiller. Hiller's gonna take it down. Stolen though, again, for by Brandwine for the sting. And it's gonna be a jump ball and Firehawks ball. Looking to put some points back up on the board here. You got 44 seconds left to go in the half. I know that as a fact that Ryan would like to take more than a 10 point lead and the coach for the SAR Singh Tali would like to take less than an eight point lead. Yeah, and there's Hiller now with the ball. Gives it over to Shaw. Shaw back to Hiller. And Hiller doesn't shoot the three. Gives it to Jacobson in the paint. Back to Shaw. Shaw for the three. And off the rim, she can't get it there. And the rebound is going to be by Horowitz. Horowitz gives it to Raish. Take the ball down the court. Raish is going to be guarded by Hiller. Gillings it down to Weinstein. Weinstein gets the layup. Six point game. That's what you want if you're the SAR Sting. Yeah, it is, and there's Maytal Hiller taking the ball down the court, crosses over, goes into the paint, kicks out to Shaw. One Shaw shot. doesn't shoot the three, gives One it to Lazary. Lazary fakes it, uh, goes into the paint for Hiller. Hiller drives in, gives it to Edry. Edry for the layup, and it's over the backboard there. It's a travel on Edry. Yeah, shuffled her feet a little bit there, but you got six seconds left on the clock, and you gotta play defense if you're gonna want to stop the SAR Sting from scoring any more points in this half. And uh, Hecht is going to roll the re roll the inbound to Race. Race guarded by Hiller. Race drives in and goes for the shot, but it's blocked by Hiller. Hiller gets the ball back with 1.3 left on the clock.
And Hiller's going to be the inbounder. Gives it to Kikushaw. Kikushaw with no seconds left and shoots a three. And can't get it there. That was from half court at the end of the half there. What a half, though, that we've seen so far. You know, Shlava going off with an early lead. And then SAR sneaking along their way right back into this game. If you're SAR and you want to win this game, you got to do exactly what you've been doing so far. Playing defense, moving your feet, and then on the offensive end, getting the ball into the paint for nice and easy layups. If you're SAR, if you're Shlava, on the other hand, you got to be thinking about your shot selection. In that event, they haven't really been taking many shots. They've been passing the ball down on the perimeter and not getting the chance to shoot the three pointers that they want to be shooting. If they're going to want to win this game, they're going to have to put up shots and have the confidence to shoot that too. So, before we go into the halftime break, Avi, I'm going to ask you one more time. Why do you think the SAR Sting get back into this game? Um, I think they really just need to keep doing what they're doing. Uh, at the end of the half there, they went on a bit of a run, and the ball was, I mean, they were really on the roll there, but I think they need to keep giving the ball to Raish and down low to a lot of times to Weinstein, and that's that's the way they're going to have to penetrate this uh, Firehawks defense. Oh, 100%. So, looks like we're going to be heading to halftime break in a few minutes. We'll be back in around six minutes for the second half of this game. But just to talk a little bit more, about what's happened so far. You know, this was a matchup that took place last Saturday night in last year's tournament for the fourth annual C Goldman tournament. And the SAR Sting took a win on that one. You know, it was a close game. They ended up pulling away by about 10 points and went on to win the championship. And these at these shall have it girls, you know, made Tall Hiller, Kiku Shaw, and a bunch of other players on the team are seniors. They really want to win this tournament. They really want to win their Miami tournament. And they're looking forward to beating the SAR Sting this year and hopefully beating the winner of the Maimonides game later on today. So we're going to head to halftime break right now, and um, we'll see you when that's over. Thank you. A message for the crowd is just to get excited and get into the game because when we're on the court, we hear you and like we feel your energy and we feed off of it. I challenge everyone from no matter where you're coming from to try to get to meet new people. We're all wearing kippos on our heads and we're all here for the same purpose and I think it's really cool if we all come together and meet each other and try to create friendships.
All and right, the ladies and gentlemen, we're back with the second half of the Shalhevet versus SIR Sting ladies semifinal game. The winner of this game will go on to play in the championship game later tonight. And, you know, something really that we're going to want to watch and look out for is the way that the SAR Sting responds. You know, they've really picked up the pace in the second quarter, cut it down from a 10-point lead to a 6-point lead, and they're going to look to, you know, narrow that margin even more in this third quarter. And there's uh, Rafe with the ball now, guarded by Hiller. Uh, I apologize for calling her Rafe at the beginning there, but uh, now inside to uh, number 12, Olivia Weinstein, but she's going to be on the floor there. And the uh, Firehawks ball taken yeah. out by Dizabi. You know, she tapped the ball with her left hand and put her right hand out of bounds. Can't do that. you got to have your whole body in bounds if you're going to want to have the ball going your way. And uh, there's Shaw over to Hiller. Hiller doesn't shoot the three. And now in the corner for Lazary, but off the board there for the three. And uh, rebound by Hecht. Hecht gives it to Raish. Raish throws the ball stolen by Shaw. Uh, Shaw's going to take it down the court. Uh, give, does, fakes it, but uh, guarded by uh, Helft. Helft uh, now over to uh, Hiller. Hiller back to Shaw. And Shaw's going to give it back to Hiller. And Hiller's going to back to Shaw now. And Shaw's going to still be guarded uh, by Helft into the corner, now into the paint for Dizabi. Dizabi gets the layup. And inbound by Raish, gives it over to Hef, uh, Lucy Hef, and uh, guarded by Shaw. She's gonna go for the three, the three, and off the rim for Lucy Hef. Uh, rebound by Jacobson, Jacobson gives it to Hiller. Now to Shaw, Shaw goes into the layup, and she gets it, and one with the foul. How slippery was that play? Two defenders right in front of her. Kiku says, okay, I see that tiny little narrow margin. Slips right through it, throws the ball up while somebody's holding down her right hand and manages to get the layup to fall. So impressive by the senior guard, number 11 on the show. Love it, Firehawks, Kiku Shaw. Yeah, and there's Shaw for the, for, for the free throw. Can't get it there. Uh, but rebound by Jacobson. Jacobson's going to go for the layup, and she can't get it. But rebound by Tizabi. Great rebound by, by the Firehawks. Give it to Lazary outside, but almost stolen. Back to Lazary, back to Shaw now, to Hiller. Hiller doesn't shoot the three, gives it Jacobson inside. Uh, back outside to Lazary, Lazary for three, and she sinks it! What a shot by Hila Lazary, junior on the Shalhevet Firehawks. The Shalhevet crowd pumped to see what they're seeing, and the SAR seeing not happy at all. From a six point deficit to a 12 point deficit. Already we had one and one by Kiku, and a three pointer by Hila Lazary. Not what you want to be doing if you're the SAR Sting and you want to get back into this game. You know, still a lot of game to play. Only six, six and a half minutes into the third quarter, and he's still got another quarter to go after this. But you gotta start playing defense if you're the SAR Sting. You know, Reich was excellent in the first quarter and the second quarter as well. She was finding her way into the paint, but she started to, uh, you know, stop impacting the ball so much on the offensive end by the end of the second quarter. If the SAR is gonna wanna win, they're gonna get the, have to get the ball into her hands and really have her find her way into the paint. Because once she gets in there, the, the Shalva Firehawks defense likes to crowd her. Then she can kick the ball out to defenders all around, and you know they can shoot the ball. Especially with the way Hachmas has been shooting, you know I'd be. It's really dangerous if the Shalva Firehawks allow her to start catching fire. And there's a race with the ball, guarded by Hiller. Spin moves, uh, doesn't do anything with the ball there. He's still guarded by Hiller. Drives in into the paint, goes to the layup, and blocked by Tazabi, but still off the rim. Now gives it to Hiller. Hiller's going to take it down the court. Uh, goes into the paint for the jumper, and she sinks the shot. Dirty move, fakes it to Avital Jacobson and goes up with the shot instead. What a play by Maytal Hiller. And there's Horitz giving the ball to Hecht now, Lucy Hecht, and she's going to drive into the paint, but uh, gives it back to Horitz there, and it's a foul on the Firehawks, number 11, Kiku Shaw. Looks like that's going to be Kiku's third foul in the game. You know, in high school basketball, you're only afforded five fouls, so it looks like they're going to try and sub her out. Nope, they're not going to get the substitution in, so instead, Kiku will sit and stay in the game with three fouls. And the jumper for Weinstein wasn't good, but now Hiller in the paint, and she gets the layup wide open there. 14, 16 point lead, starting to break out here in the third quarter. Can the Shovel Firehawks separate themselves from their opponents? And uh, Lucy Hecht with the ball, guarded by Shaw, goes down with the screen, and the three off the board there, but the rebound by Weinstein. Weinstein goes over the layup, and she gets it. And now the inbound is to Hiller. Hiller's going to take it down, guarded by uh, 
Brandwine and gets the layup there for Avital Jacobson. Just how they drew it up. Mate Tallhiller throws it right off of number 10 on SAR. Samantha Horowitz's hands to Avital Jacob for the left-handed layup. And there's a Rice with the ball again. Uh, gives it over to Weinstein. Back to Lucy Hecht for the three, and she knocks it down. Gotta but, watch Lucy Hecht. Yeah, and there's a Hiller with the ball. And she's gonna give it down low to Jacobson. Jacobson gets the layup with the left hand. And timeout, Firehawks. Firehawks crowd pumped to see what they're seeing. From a six point lead to 15 points. The lead has ballooned here in the third quarter. You know, something interesting to note is that SAR has approximately 500 students, which is roughly double the amount of students that the Shalhavet Firehawks have. How does that manifest itself on the court? You know, it's easy to say. The SAR Sting have a lot of talent around them. A lot of their players are really good at what they do. They shoot lamps really well, they shoot threes really well, and they seem to be a really well-oiled machine. When it comes to the smaller school, the Shalhavet Firehawks, it looks like they have, you know, more really talented and all-star type players. You got Maytal Hiller and Kiku Shaw, who are so good at what they do. Kiku so fast, they made Tal so good with the ball and her, and her dribbling skills. Why does that happen? You know, I would have to say, just naturally because of where they were and how they grew up. You know, going to some of the middle schools here, you know, you're on Harkham Hill Hebrew Academy and Maimonides, they produce great players, but players get to play and do their best, and when they get into high school, there are two primary high schools to go to, Shalhevet and Eula. And because of that, the best players usually get put onto one of two teams. On the New York teams, like the SAR Sting, the schools happen to be bigger, so a lot of the good players get spread out onto different teams. So all the teams are really good and the competition's always really hard. Some of the all-stars, I would have to say, in this tournament usually come from the Los Angeles teams. And right now we're seeing that from the Shalhevet Firehawks. Yeah, and there's a brand with the ball, guarded by Lazry, and now guarded by Hiller. Crosses over, almost stolen, but she's gonna steal the ball. Gives it to Raish now. Raish is gonna take it down into the paint, but now she gives it to Horvitz. Horvitz, the layup, and she gets it off the rim there. Nice left-handed hook shot there by Horvitz. And there's Hiller with the ball, gonna take it into the paint herself there, but kicks out now to Shaw. Shaw over to Lazry. Lazry for the three, and can't get it off the rim there. But rebound by Jazabi, it's gonna be uh, uh, she'll have it Firehawks ball. Talia Tazavi, the offensive rebounding machine, always manages to get herself in the right position, and the ball just seems to land in her hands. That time it was a jump ball, but she is a magnet for offensive rebounding. Yeah, and that's going to be Tazavi in the corner. It's stolen now, and it's going to be Brandwine taking the ball down the court. Uh, Brandwine is going to give it to Raish. Raish does not shoot the three. Pump fakes, goes in for into the paint, and kicks out to Grzybinski. Grzybinski back to Brandwine. And Brenwein is going to get fouled on the jumper. You know, just like we talked about around halftime, Reich penetrating the paint, kicking it out, and just like that, opportunities begin to open up for the SAR Sting. Every time she gets in there, the Shalhavet Firehawks know that they don't want her shooting the ball. So what do they do? They crowd her, allowing other players on SAR's team to get open shots. And that's exactly what we just saw with number three, Laura Brandwein, heading to the free throw line. Here we go for her second shot. Can she lower the margin? And she makes the second free throw and it's gonna be the inbound by Tazabi. The basket won't count though because it was a lane violation. One of the players on the SAR staying back actually stepped into the paint too early so the basket will not count. And there's Tibby with the ball, gives it over to Lazary in the corner, double guarded now, but she's gonna, the ball stolen by uh, Reich there and Reich is gonna take it down the court, uh, guarded by Hiller. And Rice is gonna give it over to Hecht in the corner, guarded by Tibby. Uh, tries to swat the ball, can't get it. Uh, Brandwin for the jumper, can't, just can't sing it again. Kufferman gets the rebound, now over to Hiller. Hiller's gonna take it down into the paint herself and gets the layup, it can't sink that one. And Hiller is gonna take it outside the arc now, guarded by Brandwin again. Almost stolen, but she gives it to Lazary, but the timeout is the, for the Charlotte Firehawks. You know, we're seeing it early on. Ryan told me before the game he wants to push the pace. He wants to try and run SIR off the court. Number 10, Samantha Horowitz. You know, we've been seeing how she's been killing Shalhavet in the paint, but at the same time, so many fast and easy points by the Shalhavet Firehawks. They're throwing the ball right up the court. Anytime they get a rebound or anytime SIR scores, trying to get Avital Jacobson for nice and easy layups, and it's been working. They've scored roughly, you know, 12 or 15 points already in this third quarter. And that's about half the amount of points 
they scored in the first half alone. You guys still got three minutes and 30 seconds left to play. Shove it up by 13. But if you're the SAR Sting, nothing to be worried about yet. Still plenty of time to mount a comeback and get back into this game. But if they're gonna wanna do it, they've gotta play defense and get back the second they score or the second they miss a shot. Yeah, and there's a Hiller with the ball, gives it over to Tibby. Uh, Tibby's gonna fake the three, gives it to Kupferman in the corner, back to Tibby, uh, guarded by Heck. Tibby drives in for the floater, and she gets it off the rim! Are you kidding me? The freshman sensation, Talia Tibby, drives right past the defense and floats it up for two. And there's gonna be Brandwin, Brandwin with the ball, uh, gives it to, to number 10, Samantha Horowitz, but can't get the layup there. Rebound by, the, by Sting, uh, but the ball's gonna be out of bounds, Firehawks ball. Tipped around by a lot of players over there but wound up in May Tall Hiller's hands as she plans to pass it over to Talia Tibby. And there's Tibby with the ball taking it down the court, guarded by Brandwin, and she's gonna give it to Hiller on the side, and Hiller's gonna give it into the paint to Tazabi. Tazabi can't get it but into the hands of Kupferman. Kupferman to, to Tibby in the corner, now with Lazary, and a travel on Lazary for the Firehawks, and it's gonna be Luciak taking out the ball. And I think we mentioned before, but the Firehawks are undefeated in this tournament, and the Sting are currently three and one. And Rice, Rice is going to take it down and feeds it in to the hands of number ten, uh, Samantha Horowitz. And Hiller's going to have the ball now, uh, gives it to Lazary into Tazabi's hands in the paint. Uh, back to Lazary. Lazary's going to take the three, gives it to, to Tibby. Now to Kupferman in the corner. It's gonna be uh, Hiller, Hiller gives it to Tibby. Tibby for the three, and it's an air ball there. But it's gonna be a uh, sting ball. Yeah, SAR Sting has already lost one time. And they've already lost that one time to the Hafter Hawks, who will be playing against the Maimonides MCAT soon. The winner of this game over here is gonna have to face one of those two daunting opponents, and hopefully one of them can persevere. Yes, and there's gonna be Reich with the floater, and she sinks the shot, a great play by Reich. And the inbound is to Tibby. Tibby's gonna take it on the court, got by Brandwin. Uh, uh, Tibby's gonna give it over to Tazabi now in the paint. Tazabi back in the corner to Lazary, back to Hiller. Hiller for three, and she sinks it! Wow. The inbound by Heck, given over to Reich. Reich uh, back to Samantha Horowitz. Samantha Horowitz is gonna be guarded by Hiller. Back to Rice. Rice drives in, and it's going to be stolen by Hila Lazary. Lazary's going to take it down, but it's going to be a turnover there. But it's out of bounds, and uh, Sting ball. You're going to have a substitution on the court. Hila Lazary coming out of the game for Kiku Shaw. You know, up 14 points here with a minute and a half left to go in the third quarter. If Shahavik can really push this lead up, they should really be happy about where they're in right now, heading into the fourth quarter. Yeah, and that's going to be uh, Rice with the ball again up top, guarded by Hiller. Uh, Rice is going to cross over, goes for the three, and can't get that one. But the rebound is by Horowitz. Horowitz gets blocked, and Horowitz gets her own rebound there. Horowitz goes for the layup, and just out. And Horowitz gets another rebound, goes for another layup, and she gets that one. You know, dominating, dominating in the paint. And there's uh, Hiller going to take it down, gives it to Jacobson. Jacobson to the layup, can't get that good defense by the Sting, but it's going to be Firehawks ball. We saw it again. Samantha Horowitz doing her thing on one end of the court, and the Shahamet Firehawks looking to do theirs. Running the ball up the court, trying to get Avital Jacobson to get nice and easy layups. And there's a Tizabi in the corner, but gives it to Shaw. Shaw goes, drives in, gives it to Jacobson on the feed. Uh, back, to, back to Tibby outside, back to Hiller now. And Shaw to Tibby, back to Jacobson, and the ball stolen by Raish there. Great defense by the Sting. And Raish is gonna take it down, guarded by Shaw. Raish spin moves into the paint, and goes up for the layup, and she gets a great play. 30 seconds left to go. And, and here's uh, Tibby taking the ball down. And guarded by number three, uh, Laura Brandwine. And uh, Taylor with the ball, guarded by Brandwine. Uh, she's gonna give it over, she's gonna keep it for a second, gives it over to Shaw now. And Shaw's back to Hiller, and Hiller's guarded by Reich now. And uh, Hiller's gonna give it back to Shaw, back to Hiller again. And Hiller's gonna take it slow, drives into the paint and goes up the jumper and can't get it off the rim there, but rebound by Tazabi. Tazabi goes up for the top, he gets blocked there, and it's a foul on the Sting, and Tazabi's gonna shoot two. Hopefully she can knock down these two free throws here and give the Shadow Firehawks a 12-point lead going into the fourth quarter. 
You know, something we've been noticing so far is that both coaches, Ryan Coleman and Tali, the coach of the SAR Sting, have been talking to Talia Tibby on the court. You know, she's only a freshman, but she's playing so well in this tournament, so well in this game, and her future in basketball, in the Jewish world, and, and beyond is so bright. You know, she can knock down three, she can dribble the ball, hit the floater, she can do it all. And both coaches on both ends of the ball and both ends of the court are really impressed with her so far. And Tazavi knocks down the free throw there, and Shalovitz gonna be up by uh, 11. Uh, Heck takes down the ball down the court, but the quarter is gonna be over. Okay, knocks down one free throw, and we've got an 11 point game. So a high offensive third quarter that we've seen so far. She'll have it racing out of the gates, taking an early 15 or 16 point lead, only up to allow SAR to come back and get themselves right back into this game. If you're both coaches, the first two minutes are crucial. If you're the SAR Sting, you need to put some points on the board and you gotta get some stops. You know, if you can knock down two shots and get two stops on the other end, and then you make it a seven point game and from there you're ready to get, right, get yourself right back into this game. On the other hand, if you're the Shalhavet Firehawks, you wanna get some early shots and some early points. You know, if you can bring this thing to a 15 point lead right off the bat, then it'll be really beneficial for them going down the stretch because they'll have a lot of padding when it comes to their lead against the team. It appears as if the starting five for the Shalhavet on the court will be Caroline Edry, Hila Lazary, Kiku Shaw and Avital Jacobson. Maytal Hiller, their star point guard, will not take the court to begin the fourth quarter. Interesting choice by Ryan Coleman, but probably because he has confidence in his squad that they can get this game done and that they can put some points on the board without her. You know, excellent players on both ends of the court. Excellent teams that we've seen so far. Reich, just an excellent ball handler, all around, spinning, throwing up floaters, and you got Hecht the three-point sensation who knocks down threes from anywhere on the court. Doesn't matter where she is, a couple feet behind the three-point line does not make a difference for her. And Hecht on the inbound to Horowitz, and Horowitz is leaving to Brand Brandwin. And Brandwin in can uh, passes out of bounds there, intended for Lucy Hecht, but it's going to be uh, Tibby with the inbound to uh, Shaw. Shaw's going to be guarded by Brandwin, takes the ball down, calling play and she's gonna give it to Tibby outside, and Tibby's gonna give it inside to uh, Jacobson, but the ball is out of bounds, and it's gonna be Firehawks ball, it looks like. 19 seconds on the shot clock, only 20 minutes into the fourth quarter, but the, uh, the Shalva Firehawks are on their feet. Yeah, and that's gonna be the pass to Tibby outside. Tibby's gonna give it in the paint to Edry, back to Tibby, back to Shaw, Shaw for the three, and she can't knock that one down off the rim and it's gonna be a uh, sting ball. Here we go. This is exactly what they wanted. They wanted to stop on the defensive end of the court and now it's their opportunity to, nice, to knock down some shots. If they can get a three pointer here, it'd be amazing for their squad and if they can get a two pointer, just as great. And there's uh, Brandon with the ball, gives it a race, guarded by Shaw. Brandon, uh, race is gonna, Rice is gonna take it down into the paint but it's uh, gonna be a foul on not, can't see who the foul is on, but. Looks like it's gonna be SAR ball out of bounds. Looking and to get a nice and easy layup. It's gonna be hacked with the inbound, gives it to Rice. Rice fakes the three, show and go, gives it out to the corner for the three, and it's off the rim for uh, Lucy Hackton. It's gonna be Shaw taking the ball down the court, moving fast, goes into the paint, gives it to Jacobson, Jacob for the layup, and she gets it! Great layup by Jacobson, and it's gonna be the inbound to Rice now for the SAR sting, guarded by Shaw. Rice is gonna take it down, gives it to Brandwin and she's gonna give it into the paint for Horowitz, and Horowitz is gonna give it to Heck for the layup, and she gets a great pass by Samantha Horowitz there, and the inbound is gonna be to Shaw for the fire off. Shaw's gonna take it down the court, guarded by Brandwin. Shaw's gonna give it to the corner for uh, Jacobson. Jacobson's gonna be double guarded now, but Jacobson feeds it inside to Edry. Edry for the layup, and she can't get it off the rim, but rebound by Jacobson. Jacobson can't get it. Rebound by the Sting for Horowitz. Horowitz is gonna give it to Rice. Rice is gonna take the ball down the court, uh, guarded, by, guarded by Shaw. Screened by Heck, but Rice takes it in for the layup. Can't get it, but she's fouled on the play. She's on the floor, but looks like she's okay. You know, Samantha Horowitz, just the rebounding machine, already five offensive rebounds on that end of the floor, and her defensive rebounding has been incredible as well. Offense is key if you're the SAR Sting right now, because if you're still have it, you need zero points to score in order to win this game. All you gotta do is play defense. But if you're the SAR Sting, 
not only do you need to make up 10 points right now with Reich knocking down this free throw, but you need to play defense and allow the Shalhavet to not score 10 points if you're going to want to get yourself to tie up this game and hopefully take the lead. And Sophia Reich, number two, sinks that uh, free throw there, and it's going to be number 11, Kiku Shaw, taking the ball down the court, guarded by number three, uh, Brandwin, gives it over to 12, Talia Tibby into the paint for uh, Edry, number four, gives it out to Shaw, but now it's going to be stolen by Brandwin, out of bounds, and, and it's going to be a uh, Firehawks ball, it looks like, and the inbound is going to be by number 30, uh, Hila Lazary. Yeah, you know, not an excellent pass there by Caroline Edry. Yeah. Didn't really take a look before she threw the ball, and it went over right into the SRS sting ha Sting's hands. But luckily for the Shava Firehawks, the ball went out of bounds off the SRS Sting, and they got the ball back. And there's Lazary in the inbound, gives it to Shaw, and into the corner for Lazary, but it's going to be... A moving uh, screen violation on Avital Jacobson. And she seems pretty frustrated with that. The refs say that she was shuffling her feet or moving into the offensive, the defensive player, but she begs to differ. And there's going to be Rice taking it down number two, guarded by 11, Kiku Shaw, takes it into the paint, drives in, kicks out to number 33, Lizzie Heck, who's next to be guarded by number 12, uh, Tali Tibby, back to Brandwine, number three, uh, gives it over to Sophia Rice, number two, guarded by Kiku Shaw, and is going to give it in the paint for Samantha Horowitz. She's going to go for this shot, but it's going to be a foul on the Firehawks, looks like. She's going to shoot two at the line. Yeah, only a nine-point game. If she can hit these two free throws, it's only seven points, and that's a matter of three possessions that the SAR State can use to get back into this game. A little reminder for you guys right now is that on our screen, we see that it says the third quarter, but it's actually the fourth quarter. So we have a nine point game with 5.49 left to go. Samantha Horowitz unable to convert on the first free throw. Looking to knock down the second as Talia Tazabi will check into the game for Avital Jacobson. Yes, and uh, that's, gonna, that's gonna be number 10. Uh, Horowitz shoot free throws there. And she knocks this one down, and the inbound is going to be number 30, Hill Lazary over to number 11, Kiku Shaw. She's going to take him on the court, guarded by number three, uh, Brandwin. Brandwin gives it to gives it to Hiller, number 14, into the corner for Tibby, number 12, and back to Tazabi in the paint. Shaw's going to drive in for the layup, and she can't get it off there, but the foul is going to be on number 10, Samantha Horvitz, on the sting, and it's going to be uh, Firehawks ball there. Looks like it's gonna be two free throws for guard Kiku Shaw. And something to keep in mind here, if you're both teams, is that no matter the outcome of the game, whoever wins is gonna to wanna to have time to rest their players for the 10 p.m. championship game. You know, it's gonna be a late night, whichever team you are, because you've got consolation games and championship games. But if you do win this game, you wanna try and get your star players and your starters out of the game as early as you can and still take the win because it's gonna be a long night and you don't want your players playing sloppy when it comes to the championship game. You try and take home the tournament trophy. And Shaw sings both free throws there and the inbound is gonna be on number 33, uh, Lucy Hecht. Gives it to Rate, Reich number two, guarded by Shaw. Great screen by Horowitz and Reich is gonna go and block by Tazabi. Tazabi's gonna give it over to number 11, Kiku Shaw. Kiku Shaw's gonna cross over, guarded by Brandwine. Brandwine goes in to Hiller, gives her the layup and she gets it. Maytal Hiller, number 14. And it's going to be a timeout by the SAR Sting. If you're the Shava Firehawks, this is exactly what you want. You know, you're running down the clock. You only got five minutes and 17 seconds left to play in the quarter. And at the same time, they have a 12-point lead over the SAR Sting. Ryan Coleman seems to be happy with his squad. Coach Schultz, his assistant coach, seems to be happy and working with Talia Tazabi right now as, she, as he's showing her how to shovel her feet and play defense to stop the much larger and you know, more efficient rebounder in Samantha Horowitz on the other end of the floor. When it comes to the SAR Sting, the girls are still optimistic with their chances in this game. Just a little update right now on the Maimonides game. They are currently up by one point. Um, you know, if they win that game, then whichever team wins right now is gonna have a very difficult time playing against two of their star players. You know, they've got excellent players on both ends of the teams right now. Maytal Hiller, an excellent guard. Kiku Shaw, lightning quick. But you also got Reich on the SAR Sting, who's an excellent ball handler and an excellent shooter. And you got Samantha Horowitz, who is an absolute monster in the paint. When it comes to playing against that Maimonides team, if they do win their game, they've got an excellent player in Daniela Bessler, who played for the Maccabi Games this summer in Budapest. And she really is an excellent player and a force to be reckoned with when it comes to playing basketball and really overall player she's just a great in the way that she plays 
You know, she's an excellent guard. She's got excellent handles, and she has an excellent shot as well. So we have 12 minutes to go. Let's see if the SAR Sting can get back into this game. And that's going to be Reich, uh, number two, guarded by Shaw. Gives it to Brand Brandwin, and she's going to give it back to Reich. Still guarded by Shaw. Reich is going to fake the three, but goes back to Brandwin. Brandwin's going to drive in, but goes back out. And now to Reich, guarded by Hiller. Reich is going to try to drive in there. And the feed to Horwitz, but she is going to be fouled, and it's going to be on number 11, Kiku Shaw. So we actually have confirmation right now. The Maimonides MCATs have defeated the Hafter Hawks by seven points, 57 to 50. It was a girls semifinals game, just as this one is here. And now the winner of this game will go on to face the daunting Maimonides MCATs coming all the way from Boston, and they are hungry to win the tournament. It's the first time that they've been invited to play at the Steve Annual Gloverman Tournament, and they're looking to show everybody that they're just as good as the rest of these teams who've been here for years to come. And there's Weinstein with the, lay with the free throw, and she gets that one, and it's gonna be Dissolving on the inbound, gives it to Hiller. Hiller's gonna be guarded by uh, Bran Branwein, Branwin, and she's gonna give it to Tibby on, in the, on the side there. Now to Lazary in the corner, double guarded, but it's gonna be out of bounds. Uh, Shaw have it, uh, looks like, yeah. Yeah, we have word right now that Kiku Shaw has four fouls, as does Avital Jacobson. Not something that you wanna be happy about if you're Ryan Coleman, you know, they are, quintessential to this team as they just turn the ball over and hopefully they can finish this game out without having to put those players back into the game. And there's Brandwin with the jumper but can't get that one off the off the board there and it's going to be Tibby with taking that ball down the court guarded by Brandwin. Tibby's going to drive into the paint but fumbles the ball for a second there on the floor and it's going to be a, in the hands of uh, number 33 Lizzie Heck guarded by Tibby and she's gonna take it into the paint, drives in for the layup, and one-handed, and she's fouled there, and she's gonna shoot two at the line. Nice drive, though, by Hech. You know, she comes down on the left end of the court looking for a three-pointer, as is her forte, but decides to switch to the right hand and drive all the way around the Firehawk defenders to try and go up for a layup. They're only down 11 points. They've got half a quarter left, but they're still confident, and they're still looking to get, and to find their way back into this game. She knocks down the first free throw, looks to knock down the second, and if she can do that, it'll only be nine points, which is three three-pointers away from tying up this game with the Shava Firehawks. Here we go. She takes the first free throw and cannot convert. And that's Tizabi on the rebound, gives it to Lazary, and now gives it back to uh, Hiller. Hiller's gonna drive in, fumbles the ball though, and it's gonna be Rice taking down the court, and Hiller's gonna try to block, but it's, it's gonna be Sting ball there. Looks like it's off Maytal Hiller. Maytal Hiller completely denies that shot for Reich on the SAR Sting. You know, she went up with the ball, Maytal took two hands and completely shut down her hopes of getting a layup in the air. Yeah, and that's, uh, Brandon gives it, Brandon gives it to uh, Hack. Hack is fouled by Tibby and she's gonna shoot three this time for Lucy Hack number 33. You know, we just said it, they're three three-pointers away from tying this game up. The three three-pointers from tying this game up, and they already took one of those three-pointers, got fouled on the attempt, and now Hecht will head to the free throw line for the potentiality of adding three more points to her score. But she missed the first free throw, and we're gonna see that Kiku Shaw and Alvital Jacobson, both with four fouls, are gonna check back into this game and look to help the Firehawks close this game out against the SAR Sting. 3.55 left to play on her second shot. She cannot knock it down and here these players come. And she's gonna shoot one more free throw, uh, although she missed the first two, but we'll see if she can sink this next one. And Lucy Hecht uh, puts it up, and she knocks down the last free throw. It's a nine point game. And now Maytal Hiller, number 14, is gonna take it down. Coach is telling her to slow down and she's gonna be guarded by Brandwin. Gives it to Shaw, number 11. Shaw's gonna be guarded by Reich. Gives it to uh, Lazary in the corner, but it's gonna be great defense by the Sting. And it looks like it's a uh, Firehawks ball there. You know, really giving her all the, defense of the defensive end of the court. Reich, and along with the entire team, they all wanna win this game badly. Falling on the floor, doing everything she can to try and get the ball back. And there's Jacobson, gives it to Shaw, back to Lazary. Lazary for three, and she can't get it off the marker on the rim. But uh, rebound's gonna be by Samantha Horst for the sting. She's gonna give it to Rice, can take the ball down the court to Hiller, I mean, guarded by Hiller. And Rice is gonna take it into the paint, but 
loses the ball, recovered by Horowitz for the three for Raish, and off the mark, that's another missed one. But Lucy has to take the three there, and she gets that one, she knocks it down. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. It was a nine point game, now it's a six point game. Three minutes left to go. Yes, and that's uh, Hiller with the ball, guarded by Rice. Hiller's gonna give it back to Shaw. Shaw to Hiller, and to the corner for Lazarus. Lazarus for three, and she can't get it again. Off the rim, but rebound by Tazabi. Tazabi, oh no, rebound by Hecht. But it's gonna be Sting ball there. Hard to see what's going on. Gonna be a timeout by the SAR Sting. <laughs> and boy, am I tense. You know, it seemed as if this game was cut and dry. It seemed as if Shola Shava Firehawks were about to take a win, head on to the championship game, and they might very well do so. But at the same time, the SAR Sting have found their way back into this game with six points down and 2.51 left to play. There's so much time left for them to mount a comeback and find their way back into this game. But if you're the Shava Firehawks, Avi, what do you want to be doing right now if you want to get back, if you want to take your lead back and close this one out? Um, I think you have to keep getting the ball uh, to Kiku Shaw, although she's also a great defensive player, they definitely need her offense, and they're gonna need to get the ball. They, they don't need to shoot threes, they just, I definitely think they need to get the get points on the board, not necessarily in the form of a three-pointer, but uh, they're up six, and I think that they need to play good defense to keep this Sting team uh, behind them. Oh, for sure. And Kiku's already shot three-pointers tonight, two of which she's been able to knock down. So, you know, she really is on the defensive end of the court, but at the same time, she's an excellent offensive player, an excellent shooter, and an overall talent as well. So, here we go, we're about to start back up. 28 seconds on the shot clock for the SIR Sting, and they're looking to put some points up onto the scoreboard. Yeah, and that's gonna be uh, Race with the ball now. She's gonna be guarded by Lasry, but uh, now guarded by Hiller on the screen. Gives it to uh, Brand Brandwin, but fumbles the ball, recovers it though, and guarded by Lasry, she's gonna take the ball in, but kicks it out to Reich in the corner. Reich is gonna take it in, and now loses the ball, and it's gonna be out of bounds. Firehawks, uh, the Firehawks have the ball. Yeah, it looked like she tried to drop it off to Olivia, but threw the ball too far, so Olivia had to run for it to try and get the ball from going out of bounds, but she failed to do so. Yeah, and that's Kiyu Shaw number 11 gonna be taking it down, and uh, she's gonna give it to Lasry. Lasry's gonna pump fake, give it to Hiller in the paint. Uh, to Tali Tazabi, now to Jacobson. Jacobson can't get the layup there. Rebound by Horowitz again, and it's gonna be uh, Lucy Heck taking the ball down, and she gets it into the paint, kicks out though to Weinstein. Weinstein's gonna miss the jumper, gets her own rebound though, gives it to Horowitz, now kicks out to Raish. Raish is gonna shoot the jumper, and she can't get that one, and it's gonna be out of bounds, uh, Sting Ball. And A big game with even bigger implications. Only six points down, but the winner of this game is gonna go on to face the Maimonides Cats at 10 p.m. in this very she'll have a gym. Yeah, and that's Lucy Heck with the jumper. Can't get it off the rim there, and it's gonna be rebound by Alvital Jacobson, and uh, it looks like it's a foul on number three there, us, uh, Laura Brown, Brown, Brandwein. Yeah, you know, excellent job by Ryan Coleman putting Kiku Shaw and Alvital Jacobson back into the game. Four fouls, doesn't matter, because you know, they're gonna play their hardest, and no matter what happens, they'll be back into the game and play an excellent game. But it looks like the Charlotte Firehawks did it over and back, which means that they threw the ball back across the half-court line. So it's gonna be a turnover, an SAR Sting ball. And there's Reich with the ball, guarded by Maytal Hiller, number 14, and it's gonna be a foul, it looks like, on Maytal Hiller, number 14. Uh, Sting is gonna take it out. Almost in the bonus. I think you need seven fouls to be in the bonus, but they only have four fouls. So it looks like, oh, never mind. That is their 10th foul against the SAR Sting. So Reich will head to the free throw line to shoot a pair. If she can knock these two down and make it a four point game, it will really heighten their chances of winning this game. She and takes the first and looks to take the second as well. Yeah, and uh, Reich is gonna shoot another one here. She made the first one and the second one is not gonna sink there, and almost stolen, but uh, Shaw recovers the ball, she's gonna take down the court, and goes into the paint, uh, gives it over to Hiller, and Hiller's gonna make shoot the layup, but you can't get that one, and it's gonna be Sting ball, and it looks like Shaw's not happy about that call. Five point game, one minute and 30 seconds left to go. Looks like a two man press. And there's gonna be uh, Brandwine taking down the court, 
uh, guarded by Shaw. She's gonna give it into the inside to Horowitz. Almost stolen, but recovered by Lucy Hecht. Lucy Hecht's gonna be guarded by Shaw. Lucy Hecht shoots the three, and she gets the deep three to make it a th two point game. Wow. Are you kidding me? And Are then, you kidding me? And there is Shaw with the ball now. She's gonna take it slow now. It's only a two point game with a minute left. And she's gonna be guarded by Rice. She's, Goes into the paint, gives it to Tazabi. Tazabi is going to get the shot up, and she can't get that one. Rebound by Jacobson, but. A timeout by the Shaw of the Firehawks. You know, Jacobson unable to get the, I mean, sorry, Tazabi unable to get the layup to fall. But Ryan will take a timeout to try and regroup with his squad with 48 seconds left to play. You know, this game, I said it before, it seemed all but done. But the Shaw of the SAR Sting has found their way back into this one. Only two points down. If the Shovel Firehawks can knock down a two-pointer right now, it makes it a two-point game. And then you don't want three-pointers by the SAR, and you don't want a foul. But if you're the SAR Sting, you, and, you're the, and you're their coach, Tali, you got to be happy with what you've seen so far. They've gotten the stops, and they've gotten the offensive game to go. We've got two full timeouts left for Shalhevet, should they need to use them. But right now, it looks like you know Ryan is just drawing up some plays for his team to help them in their final 48 seconds left to play in this game. Looks like the SAR coach is just telling her players the same thing that she's been telling them throughout this game. Stay confident and play your game. You know, a really good defensive team, that's what they've historically been, and that's where they take pride in their game. Looks like if they can finish off and play some defense and knock down some shots, they might be able to take a win in this semifinals game and face the Maimonides MCATs at 10 p.m. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, with a fresh shot clock to go. It's going to be Shaw the ball, out of bounds. Kiku Shaw will inbound, look to inbound. And Shaw's going to inbound the ball, uh, guarded by Reich there. And she's going to try to find someone open, and she uh, gives it. Um, Looks like the ball went out of bounds. And Reich will inbound the ball. And, but the, sorry about that. So Reich stole the ball on the inbounding play, managed to call a timeout right away. So that way she would recover the ball and have a chance to reset the offense for her team. You know, should they hit a two pointer, it really increases their chances of winning this game or sending this game to overtime. But should they hit a three pointer, that's what you gotta be worried about. But at the same time, you don't want Kiku Shaw and Ali Tal Jacobson to foul. You have four fouls on each of them. And should this game go to overtime, you're going to need them if you're going to want to close this game out. Last year, we saw a very similar thing happen. The SAR Sting were up most of the game, but the Shahaba Firehawks managed to find their way back into the game, but it was all too late by then. But it looks like the SAR Sting have come alive in the second half. They've outscored their opponents by around seven or eight points in this fourth quarter as they've really locked the Shahaba Firehawks down on offense. Here we go. It looks like it's gonna be SAR to inbound the ball and a full court press by the Shalva Firehawks. Yes, and that's Lucy Heck taking the ball in and she is going to give it over to Samantha Horowitz. Samantha Horowitz is gonna give it to Heck. Heck is gonna guard it. Kiku Shaw, number 11. Heck is gonna take it back. Screen by Brandwin. Heck is gonna give it over to Rice. Rice is gonna be guarded by Maytel Hiller. Into the paint for Horowitz. This will be out of bounds. And SAR ball. Heck will inbound it under the basket. Here we go. And Lucy Heck is going to take the ball in, guarded by Kiku Shaw, number 11. Heck is going to get the ball now by the ref, and she's going to give it over, fakes it, gives it to Reich, Reich, Reich. Now she's going to take it into the paint, but gives it over to Weinstein. Weinstein gets the layup, and it's a tie game. Wow. And Kiku Shaw is going to have the ball now, taking down the court with only 24 seconds left in the game. And she's going to take it slow now, guarded by Reich, and uh, just holding the ball now. The crowd is trying to get into this one, but Shaw's going to take it into the paint. Gives it over to Zobby. Zobby's going to kick out to Lazary. Lazary's going to give it to Shaw in the corner. But it's going to be a timeout by the Firehawks. Are you kidding me? What clutch shots by Olivia Weinstein. They kick the ball right out to her. She flips it up with her left hand and manages to get it to fall. We have a tie game here in the semifinals for the Shaw Firehawks versus the SAR Sting with only 10 seconds left to do. And if you're Ryan Coleman, you want to get the ball in Maytel Hiller's hands. She's an excellent shooter, an excellent dribbler, and an excellent passer, and an all-around all-star. 
what I see happening is she's going to drive the ball into the paint and look for a nice floater. You're going to have Talia Tazavi crash the offensive glass as she's done so well. And if they can't get that to fall or that play to go, then Maytala might look to kick the ball out for an open shot. But regardless, you don't want to let the SAR Sting have a chance to win this game. So you got to shoot the ball with around three or four seconds left to make sure that that's the last shot that goes up. Maybe give some time for an offensive rebound, but none more than one or two seconds because you don't want the SAR Sting knocking on a buzzer beater on the offensive end. Looks like the SAR Sting is going to walk back onto the court and get ready to set up their defense as the Charlotte Firehawks look to set up their offense. One more timeout for Ryan Coleman, should he need it. Here we go. And we see Ryan Coleman talking to Maytel Hiller, just as predicted. Interestingly enough, she will look to inbound the ball. And Hiller's gonna inbound the ball, gives it to Shaw. Shaw's gonna be drive down, and the ball is stolen by, by Rice, it looks like, and she's gonna take it down the court with only four seconds left. Gives it over to Weinstein. Weinstein's gonna be on the floor. And it's going to travel, and it's going to be Firehawks ball with 1.3 seconds left. This is ridiculous. And she looks to catch the ball, trips on herself, and turns the ball over with 1.3. But unfortunately for the Shelvin Firehawks, you don't get to advance the ball all the way up to their front court. They will have to inbound the ball all the way back on the SAR Sting side of the ball. They will have to... Uh, inbound the ball on the SAR Sting side of the court. And because of that, they'll have to probably throw a full court pass and look for a shot right away. You know, not much time to get anything to go, but you could throw up a Hail Mary and hope that goes in. Right now, I gotta say this game goes into overtime and I don't know how this one's gonna turn out with so many fouls on Kiku Shaw, one of the, one of the best and, you know, really stingy defenders on their team. If they can't play the rest of the game with her, I don't like their chances at winning this game. But on the other hand, SIR seems cool and confident, still smiling. You know, they're just happy that they got back into this game because they came here to play tonight. They're not looking to go home. They're looking to take another back-to-back -back tournament win should they have to go and face the Maimonides on Cats later tonight. Here we go. And there's Jacobson gonna inbound the ball, uh, guarded by Weinstein. She's gonna give it, she's gonna give it to Shaw, but there's whistles down and. It'll be a delay of game warning. Not sure exactly how, but it will be a delay of game warning by the SAR Sting. It was on the coach for stepping too far onto the court. And Here we go. There's going to be Jacobson with the inbound. She's going to try to give it over to Hiller. And time's going to run out on the game clock. We are going to overtime. Oh, my goodness. It seemed to be 48 to 37 at the start of the fourth quarter. But since then, the SAR Sting have managed to outscore the Firehawks by 11 points and find their way into an overtime game here tonight. I haven't seen anything like this so far in the tournament. We've had one game that went into overtime, which was Frisch versus the KYHS Storm boys game, and Frisch Why? managed to take the Frisch lead. Frisch versus Hebrew Academy. Sorry, Frisch versus Hebrew Academy. Avi, who do you think comes out on top of this game, and why do you think that is? Um, I think it's, uh, it's really tough to see who's going to be on top here, but the, the momentum is, looks to be in the, in the, Sting's, hand, the Sting's hands right now, but we'll see if Kiku Shaw and the Firehawks can have what it takes to win this game and go to the championship. For sure. You know, I gotta keep apologizing. The name of the SAR coach is Tali Zelenitz. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but she's an excellent coach as we've seen so far. Managed to keep her team calm and collected throughout the adversity that they've had to face throughout most of this game. SAR versus Shulhavet, they're gonna look to inbound the ball or tip the ball to begin the overtime period. And it's gonna be Tazabi for the Firehawks um, on the tip off and for SAR, it's gonna be Samantha Horowitz. Here we go. And it's up and the tip is taken by, and it seems that the 
Tazabi's not allowed to take the tip because she was the one tipping the ball. Yeah, if you're gonna tip the ball, you know, you call it a tip. You gotta tip it to your players. You can't catch it. It ain't called a catch. And there's the inbound to Rice. Rice is guarded by Hiller. Rice is gonna drive in, but kicks out to, uh, um, to Brandwain. And Rice is gonna drive in, guarded by Hiller. Rice is gonna give it to Horowitz. Horowitz gets the layup, and they are up two points right now. And Jacobson's gonna give the ball to Shaw. Shaw's gonna take it down the court. Uh, guarded by Brandwin, she's gonna give it to Hiller. Hiller's back back to, to Shaw, and Shaw is gonna be still guarded by Brandwin. She's gonna keep the ball for a second, give it to Hiller now. Hiller up top, and Hiller is going to keep the ball for a second, but give it to the corner. The last relaxes for three, and she can't get it off the mark, but the rebound is by Horowitz for the SIR Sting, and she's gonna give it to Reich now. Reich is gonna take the ball down the court. Reich guarded by Hiller. Reich goes in, Reich kicks out to Brandwin. Brandwin is gonna hold the ball for a second, gives it back to Reich. Reich guarded by Hiller still. Reich is gonna fake the three, drives in, goes up for the layup, and she gives it to Horowitz, and Horowitz goes in, but she is fouled there, and she's gonna shoot two at the line. You know, way too much penetration that the Firehawks are allowing of the SAR Sting. Reich is getting anywhere she wants. She's pump faking, spinning, and finding her way right into the lane, and she is ripping right through this Firehawks defense. She's managed to get the ball into the paint twice, and both times, Dropped it off to number 10, Samantha Horowitz, and Samantha's been able to knock down a layup. She takes the first free throw and looks to take the second in an effort to take a four point lead with three minutes left to go in the game. And Talia Tibby is going to come in for Ahila Lasbury, and we'll see if Samantha Horowitz can make the second free throw here. Runner freshie! Runner freshie! And she puts it up, and off the rim there. Rebound tipped to, to Hiller, and she's going to give it to Shaw. Shaw's going to go in, gives it to Jacobson, but she's going to get blocked in the hands of Lucy Hatnow for the sting. She's going to get stolen, though, for Tiku Shaw. Shaw's going to take it down into the paint, goes to play up herself, and she's fouled, and she's going to shoot two at the line. The the foul is on Samantha Horowitz there, number 10 for the SAR Sting. And Kiku Shaw, incredibly slow to get up. Rolled around on the court there for a few. It seems as if she bumped. I think her head as she went up for the shot. And she seems to be absolutely drained from this game. You know, she's incredibly quick. And you see her running up and down the court. She had a steal there, managed to get the ball back. And it's only a three-point deficit for the SAR, for the Shavet Firehawks. She's going to look to take both of these free throws right now to make it a one-point game to get her team back into this one. It seems as if it's going to be two free throws, and the refs are going to talk to Kiku, try and calm her down, and let her grab her breath and take a minute before she takes these free throws. You know, she banged her head pretty hard there on the floor. And you just want to make sure that's a fair advantage as she walks up to try and sink these two for the Shelter Firehawks. Here we go. And Kiku Shaw with the first free throw, number 11 for the Firehawks. And she puts it up. And she gets the first free throw. Only a two-point game now. Not only is it a one-point not only is it a one-point possession game, but they only need one shot in order to tie this game up. Can she convert on this next free throw? That is the question. And she can't there, but the rebound is by Jacobson. Jacobson is gonna give it over to Shaw. Shaw for three. And she oh, takes the three! Wow! Kiku Shaw for three. The Shaw fans electric. Wow, and now Rice with the ball. She's gonna be guarded by Tibby. Now over to Lucy Hatch in the corner, she shoots the three, and she sinks that one! And, no. the and they take the lead back, a two-point game now, but Tibby has the ball now, she's gonna cross over behind her back, and she goes in to the corner, and she feeds it down into the paint for, uh, and now back to Shaw, Shaw's gonna go for the floater, she can't get that one, but the rebound is by Jacobson, Jacobson can't get the layup though, and they're still gonna be down two, and the ball is in the hands of Lucy Hatch for the sting, gives it to, Gives it to Brandwin. Brandwin's gonna go into the paint and over to Rice for three. And she can't get that one. It's gonna stay a two-point game. But Hiller has the ball. Hiller's gonna take it down the court. She's moving fast. She goes into the paint, goes for the layup herself. And she can't get that one, but she gets her own rebound. And she's gonna give it over to Tibby for outside the arc. Feeds it inside to Tazabi. Tazabi's gonna give it back to Hiller. Hiller's gonna almost lose the ball. Shaw for three. 
It just gets another three to take the lead back. Timeout by the Shalavit Firehawks. What an incredible offensive game we've seen here in the last two minutes. Tiku Shaw is taking the team on her back. She first gets fouled, gets injured, knocks down the first free throw, misses the second, gets her own rebound, and takes a three. Only to allow the SAR to knock down a three. As I'm not done here, ladies and gentlemen. I still have work to do. And takes another three and bottoms it in the net. But as much as, as exciting as this is, it's still a one-point game. Any shot that goes down down for either team will give them the lead. You know, shot that's got to play defense here. But the SAR Sting have also got to score if they want to win this game. You got to get the ball down for the SAR Sting. It doesn't matter what you get. You're going to lay up or you get a three-pointer. Because regardless, you're not going to be able to take the lead if Shalavit score another point. If they happen to get a layup and then Shalavit gets another point, Shalavit will take the lead. And if you get a three-pointer and Shalavit gets a shot, it'll tie the game up. So look for easy baskets. It doesn't matter what you get. If you get a shot and it's open, you need to take it if you're SAR. Now I think it's going to be interesting to see the way Shalavit plays defense. Are they going to go back to their man or their press? It seems as if they're going to go back to the man. And here's Reich taking the ball down the court, inbound by Lucy Hack. She's going to be guarded by Maytal Hiller up top. And Maytal, and Reich is going to take the ball in, goes into the paint, almost loses the ball, fumbles it, but goes to the layup, and she gets blocked by Maytal Hiller, and that's going to be Sting Ball. Great block. Sting Ball out of bounds. Really, really incredible play by the Shalva Firehawks. What an incredible game we've seen tonight. And hacked on the inbound, gives it to Rice. Rice is going to drive in. Mobile loses the ball, and it's stolen by Kiku Shaw. Kiku Shaw is going to take the ball down the court, but it's going to be a foul on the SIR Sting, and that's on number three, Laura Brandon. Brandwin. That's a foul on the. It's up. They looks like they're in the bonus, but they won't give them the free throws. I'm not sure. And Why not? Chiku Shaw is going to get the inbound there. Sorry, no bonus. One more free throw, one more foul for bonus. And then they'll head to the free throw line. And now uh, Hiller has the ball guarded by Reich. Hiller's going to take it slow a little bit this time. Uh, keeps it up top uh, and gives it to Shaw. Shaw's guarded by Brandwin. Shaw's going to go into the paint. Shaw gives it to Dezabi. Dezabi for the layup. And she can't get that one off the rim. But rebound by Jacobson. Jacobson throws it up. It can't get that shot down. And it looks like it's going to be SAR Stingball inbound by Lucy Hecht here over to uh, right, Reich. So a lot of game left to go. Anything can happen. This is anybody's game, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, and 40 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And Reich is going to take the ball down the court. And she's going to go into the paint, but goes up and gets goes up and gives it to Weinstein for the layup. And she gets it, takes the lead. Now Kiki Shaw is going to take the ball down the court. Got it by Brandman. And she's going to cross over, goes into the paint. Takes the ball for herself, goes into the jumper, can't get it. It's a rebound by Olivia Weinstein for the sting. And now it's going to be... A timeout by the SAR sting. Incredible defense. Kiku Shaw had to go up, take a shot that they did not like, and she couldn't knock it down. You know, she's limping, she's holding her back. And she should be. She's carrying the weight of the Shava team on her back. But the SAR sting playing like a team. You know, they drive in, they kick the ball, and they're hitting their open layups. That's what you need to be doing. But it's still anybody's game. You know, what's probably gonna happen is they're gonna look to inbound the ball. Shava's gonna look to get a steal, but if they can't, they're gonna foul right away. If they foul, they're gonna head to the free throw line. But regardless of whether or not they make both shots, Shalhavik can still win or tie the game with a three or a two pointer. So it's gonna really go down to the wire here. An incredible game for two incredible teams. And I honestly cannot tell you what's gonna happen going on for the rest of this game. So the refs will blow their whistle and the, the players will head back out of the court. And you gotta play defense right now if you're Shalhevet. You need a steal right away. And you got to make sure that you get the rebound should they miss. If you're SAR, you need to get an inbound, you need to inbound the ball. By no exaggeration do I say that this is probably one of the most important moments of both teams that both teams have had so far in their young seasons. 
Looks like Sharpett's gonna press the ball. And the inbound is gonna be taken by Lucy Hecht, um, guarded by Avital Jacobson. And she's gonna throw it, almost stolen there, but Reich has the ball. Reich is gonna take it on the court, and she's fouled by Maytal Hiller. And she's on the floor, but she gets up, looks like she's okay. And, and they're gonna head to the free throw line. Reich will shoot two free throws. She's been great at the free throw line tonight. Hopefully she can knock down a couple more. Yes, and uh, Reich is gonna shoot the first free throw here out of two. She's the... shooting 50% tonight from the line. You know, one point really gives them a cushion, but two points is really what they're looking for. And she, and she knocks down the first. And SIR is up two points now, and Hila Lazary is gonna come back in the game. And the second free throw for Reich is no good. Rebound though by Reich herself. She's gonna take it outside, and she is not fouled though. Now she's fouled by Kiku Shaw, and that's gonna be five fouls, it looks like, for Kiku Shaw. And she will head to the bench. You know, not something you wanna see if you're the Firehawks. They're gonna have to put in another three-point shooter if they're gonna wanna have to, if they're gonna wanna be able to tie this game up, should they hit one free throw? Should they hit two free throws? You know, it might be putting the game out of reach, but anything can happen. It's been a crazy game so far. And here we go as Reich will look to take her, her first free throw of the night. Sorry, first free throw out of two. And Reich is some confusion on the court, it looks like, but Reich will take her first free throw now. And she puts it up, and she can't get that one. Still a two-point game. So we'll see if she can get the second one here to put them up by three. No matter what happens, you got to rebound the ball if you shall have it. You can't afford to lose this rebound. And she gets the second one, and now the inbound is going to be to Tibby. Tibby's going to take Dizal down the court, gives it to Dizalbi, and if the ball is stolen by Weinstein, the Weinstein, and they get, and she is fouled. That's Lucy Hecht with 2.6 left in this overtime, and she is going to go to the line again to shoot two free throws. You know, really deflating for the She'll Have It crowd right now. They had the ball, had the chance for a three, and turned it over to the SAR Sting. This is the best shooter that they've got, and they're sending her to the free throw line to try and ice the game for the SAR Sting. Let's see if she can do what she does best, shoot the ball, and hit the bottom of the rim. And uh, it looks like um, Selene Basaratman is gonna come back in the game now for the free throws by Lucy Hecht. And she hits the first one, and it's a four point game. How exciting is this? From down roughly 15, they clogged their way back into this game, and it looks like they're gonna take a win over the Shelva Firehawks and head to the championship game to look to take their second and the second consecutive trophy. And the inbound to Tibby, and she's just gonna put it up. The Shelva Firehawks. And that's the game, folks. The SAR Sting come back from down 15 points and take a win in the semifinals game. What an incredible game to watch. So exciting. I can't tell you how ecstatic they must feel right now to know that they are headed on their way to the championship game. You know, they're about to go up later tonight at 10 p.m. to face the, um, the Maimonides MCATs, and they are also a hell of a team. You know, they've been practicing for this moment. Both teams, both really coached teams, and I can't tell you also who's gonna come out on top for that game. Two incredible players on this team, along with the rest of the team, and two incredible players on my Maimonides team. It should be really something to watch. So, thank you so much for tuning in to the girls' semifinals game, and we look to see you for the next game, which will be the boys' Shelvet Firehawks versus the Hafter Hawks. Thank you so much. Thank you.